Mark, what was your favourite bit? Oh, well, I think tonight is my favourite part. Mm. After, after a, a, a long, long, long process, a lot of hard and wonderful work from everybody concerned, actually it's fantastic mm. to be here and get that reaction. Mm. I'm That's very moved, I have to say, yeah. and I got very moved watching it for the 300th time. <laughs> <laughs> it never fails to kill me at the end. I think it's, I, I can say it because Stephen knows, I think it's mm. absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Is it quite difficult being Sherlock Holmes then? Quite yeah. chatty, quite a lot quite of work. Quite hard work. I'm a lot. I'm a lot slower than him, <laughs> in every way. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's great to ramp up, and it is it's really enjoyable to see him back on the big screen. And I d of course I enjoy I enjoy it tremendously. I enjoy uh, you know working with amazingly talented people like you have up here, and Martin um, hobbling around in a wooden New Zealand, but you know here in spirit. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a joy from that point of view. It really is a joy, and it's a lovely family. Hartswood is a very good family to work for. So. That side of it is, is, is easy peasy, but yeah, getting the lines right is a bit <laughs> 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 And Lara, you've joined the family now. How was that watching that? It was immense. Stephen Moffat, you're a genius. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure everyone will second that. Um, and favorite moment has to be Mark stepping on Ben's sheet in Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> There was particular love for the sheet scene around here. I don't quite know what <laughs> what's going on in this corner of the room, but there's a locus of screaming all the way through uh, from that particular area. Um, obviously, tonight's an amazing night. There were people queuing up for returns. You, you start to realise what a phenomenon this is. It's, it's almost like the take that of shows. It's got kind of like a, a, a real fan base to it. I just sure, to throw, throw that in there. Um, oh, first of all, did anybody manage to get in on a return? I just wonder statistics. Did that happen? Did you? Wow. You must feel very lucky. <laughs> But going back, you didn't, I mean, initially when you, when you f first came up with the idea for the series, you didn't think, if we go back to the slow dissolve and back to the broadcast of the first series, on that first night when it went out, you weren't expecting it to be as big as this, did, were you? You wouldn't realistically expect this. This, this, this doesn't actually happen. Uh, it's certainly never happened uh, to me before, uh, where you have an instant hit, a hit where people are already complaining that it's on decline uh, within an hour, which is a, <laughs> a <laughs> real proof of fan status. They're already saying it's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> um, I think we got to that in, in one hour of the first episode. No, you couldn't, um, you couldn't anticipate something as big as this. We thought that it would be well-reviewed mm. and sort of uh, prestigious and smart, and, and we thought it would go to second series. And all that. We thought we'd get some small audiences. We didn't know that it would be we're just sort of whoppingly huge. That's a hostage to fortune, I'm just <laughs> 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 I think it's actually, now he's finished speaking, it was actually 11 million. <laughs> <laughs> By the time that's finished, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, we were very, you know, we were very proud of it uh, last year and, and very excited, but it, it just ran away with everyone. It was amazing. Mm. Uh, uh, and to get that level of, of ownership from people and, and dedication, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, I went around to Stevens and, and Susan watched it with them, with Mark and everyone, and... Uh, it was just that overwhelming instant feeling that you now have in the world of, you know, uh, streaming, Facebook, blogging, and obviously Twitter, that you have an immediate audience feedback. So you felt almost part of the live audience event. It was very strange, and I ex sort of expected, you know, people to be abseiling into the garden with telephoto lenses and just kind of come and running at us for good reasons. Don't um, give people ideas. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, it, was, it was very instantaneous, and, um, you know, it's very strange to do that and be in your own audience in that kind of a way, as it was tonight, but, but lovely though it was. Um, to be so supported, it's, it's you only get that live I kind of feedback when you're on stage. I so remember as well when uh, we watched the the last episode, the great game of M of Martin's, mm. and and Benedict, you were you were driving through the night on a bike with the mm -hmm. flu, mm -hmm. and that we had to pause it for five minutes, so we were five minutes behind everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to the beginning of the pool scene, and my pocket just went. It's <laughs> 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 fantastic. <laughs> Most excitement I've had all year. <laughs> <laughs> So given that it was so big, is that why, for this series, because we know what the three episodes are going to be about now, there's this, and then there's The Hands of Baskervilles, and then Right on About Falls, is that why you chose those three, because they're the big three blockbusters? Or was it a kind of conscious decision to go in with the big ones for this well, series? I was just thinking, do, why wait? Why mm. not just get on with it now? I mean, because there's that big e wave of excitement, and everyone is wondering what we're going to do about the home, and you still are. Uh, and what we're going to so do we. about... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a work in progress. Uh, and uh, um, what we're going to do about... Uh, Eichenbach and all that stuff. And what we're going to do about Irene Adler. What, what we're saying was, well, to hell with deferred pleasure. More sooner, knower. I mean, that's good. I suppose as well, you get you get that confidence from the success of a first series like that, just to think, well, let's go for it. That was the that was the thrill of it. It's like, well, they present themselves. The three most famous stories in one mini series, three films. This is, you know, it doesn't get any better than those stories. To, to, uh, to choose from, so let's go with it. So with this one, you, you said it's not Holmes in love, it's Holmes and love. 
And was the reason that you decided to kick off the series with that because of the impact that Benedict's made in Sherlock Holmes? I mean, Sh Steven Spielberg has said that this is the greatest screen Holmes ever. Um, but but also, um, you know, th there's a massive female fan base out there as well. So was it was it partly <laughs> was it partly for titillation that you went in on a love steal on the first one? You kind of like let's get him. One of the staples of Sherlock Holmes <laughs> is, is, is the fact he tends to fall for a bad woman at some point. Look at all the Sherlock Holmes films. And, and Mark and I's favourite film probably ever in the whole world. Go and see it if you haven't seen it. Is the Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, in which that's a classic. He falls in love with a bad woman. It, it's, there's something about it that works. And yes, we had a we had a dashing young Sherlock Holmes. Uh, why not? Yeah. Yeah. But not you as well. Also, it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun thing to see that. Then we fired him, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't available. That's why Martin was so angry yeah. on the first day. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lara, tell but us about Irene Abbott, because we were speaking before about kind of what the setup is in the relationship between uh, Sherlock and Irene. Mm -hmm. And the, the take that you had on their characters, I thought, was... Say that thing you said before. Um, uh, no, I, I, just, I just said I think she's a very flawed damaged, fearful woman, and she has this wonderful mask that's, that's solid, that's always got her to where she is in life, and then she meets this man, and they see each other. Mm. But it's that he's flawed as well, it's a love completely. story between yeah. the two. Completely it's like looking in the mirror, flawed yeah. in that sense. Exactly, yeah. What I love about it, it's so complicated. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's thrilling about it. Mm. She's gay, he's not interested in anything apart from brain work, mm -hmm. but something happens, and it doesn't actually have to be as as mundane as, as a love story. Yeah. It's much more interesting than that. Well, it yeah, follows yeah. the vein of you know, classical um, English romances in a way, the repression of emotion, the idea that it's there, but it's not, it doesn't have to be spoken, which is, you know, that's, that's, that's a great thing to be able to play as an actress, I think, mm. to draw it from. And again, going back to the original story, which I think even Stephen has you know, followed the beats of it so beautifully, is that at the very end, the, the king of Bohemia offers Sherlock Holmes a king's ransom for or um, solving a case, and he says, no, I'll have the photograph. Mm. And it's never, I mean, the entire world of literature has been written about, therefore, that Sherlock Holmes and Irene Abbott, or I Irena, or Irene, mm. were passionately in love. It's all, it's become a, an industry in itself. But that moment mm. is kind of almost unique in, in, mm. in the canon. There's no real explanation except for the fact that he admires her above all of her sex. And and should we talk of Martin Freeman for a second? Because he's not here. Yeah. It'd be nice to kind that of to honour his presence for a minute. Everything was there about his relationship with Sherlock, but at the same time, you know, this, this fantastic bit of writing, the discovery mm -hmm. of what, what the agenda really is between the two of them. Um, I thought he was brilliant. Anyway, that's, that was just... How did you find it working with him, Lara? Oh, gosh, it was a joy. Um, he's, he's an actor that will change up every single take. Yeah. Um, he'll give you this end of the spectrum to this, every colour under the rainbow and um, it's just a pleasure to, to play opposite because it's always fresh, it's always new. He'll be the first to go, nope, don't use that take because I don't know what the hell I was doing. Um, but he just, he's, he, he actually even says he's the most confident and the most free in life when he's working. Mm. That's, that's, that's his gift and that's what he is rightly being um, recognised for. Yeah, and he's a consummate professional. Another member of the cast I wanted to talk about was Eunice Stubbs who is here, Mrs Hudson, who... <laughs> Who, who, when I got here, I thought, oh my God, that's Eunice Stubbs sitting on a bench out there waiting to just come in with everybody else. But no, Eunice Stubbs wouldn't just be sitting outside on a bench waiting to come in with everybody else, but she was. She was just sitting there, mm -hmm. just kind of just being all lovely and humble and lovely. But, um, but the relationship between Holmes and Mrs. Hudson is another key one. Uh, uh, didn't you were saying before, Stephen, that you hadn't written it in the way that it is? Mm -hmm. It's a very emotional relationship. It's, Sher it's of the one place that Sherlock actually loves someone and cares for them, and that was something well, that Well, there's, there's virtually nothing in the original stories mm -hmm. Uh, and Alan Barnes, in his learned new book, has mm. correctly said that Eunice is the greatest uh, screen interpretation of Mrs. Hudson, and I think that's absolutely true. Oh. <laughs> well, I've known Una, well, she's known me pretty much all of my life through being a friend of my, my mum. So she is, she is like a sort of mother figure to me on the set. Oh. So um, I'm thrilled to hear you, you, you say that. But it also, came it from came, as I remember, it, the, the scene last year when, when uh, John and Sherlock are first sweeping out of Baker Street and you say the game Mrs. Hudson is on, and I think he spontaneously kissed Una, yeah. and it sort of developed from there, didn't mm. it? It's like, yeah. well, he's he, he's just got a much warmer relationship with her than normal, and also because it, because they're much younger than they're normally presented, it's it's a, a much more naturally maternal relationship. Mm. And I like I, I do like the idea that there's a vulnerability in feeling with Sherlock, and it's a it's a tricky one, that, and more of that will will come to the fore, I'm sure. But 
it's it's something that's interesting. It's something if you have some sort of an Achilles heel, something that's universally an Achilles heel, it makes him a little bit more human, and therefore things that happen to him throw him into a little bit more jeopardy, which is always fun to play with. So I guess that's another element of that.